All right, now the other use for the index of refraction is Snell's law. Snell's law is a pretty simple equation. It tells us that n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So we have to talk about how to use that equation to solve problems. All right, um, so a couple of things uh, that we'd have to talk about there. Okay. Uh, if theta is big, does that mean the sine of theta is big or small? This is taking us back to trigonometry. Well, it turns out that when theta is big, the sine of theta is also big. There's a direct relationship between those. That wouldn't be, this is for an acute angle. For an acute angle, when theta is big, the sine of theta is big. All the angles we'll deal with in uh, optics are pretty much always acute. So this wouldn't be true for a cosine, but this is why it's more useful to use the sine. So there's a direct relationship between theta and the sine of theta. So now, what does that mean? Suppose that we're moving into a medium where n2 is bigger than n1. Suppose we're moving into a medium with a bigger index of refraction. We're moving into a medium with a bigger index of refraction. Well, if n2 is big, is theta 2 going to have to be big or small? If n2 is bigger than n1, is theta 2 going to have to be bigger or smaller than theta 1? It's going to have to be big. Let's think that over. I'm sorry. I guess I don't. So if n2 is bigger than n1, that is, we're moving into a medium with a bigger n. For example, here we have air. Remember, that has an n of 1. And here we're moving into water. Well, we know that water must have a bigger n than the air, because all the n's are bigger than 1. If you looked it up in the table, you would see that n was 1.33. So this is an example where the light is moving into a medium with a bigger n. n2 here is bigger than n1. What does that mean that theta 2 will be bigger or smaller than theta 1? We should be able to see that just by looking at the equation. N2 is bigger here on the right-hand side. Does that mean that theta 2 has to be big or small for this to be a true equation? So it sounds like what you're saying is that this term should be bigger than n1, and this term should be bigger than theta1, and then it would be a true equation. If we think about it a little bit more, though, it wouldn't be a true equation then, right? What you're saying is that both of the terms here should be smaller on the right, on the left, and both of the terms on the right should be bigger, but then it wouldn't be a true equation. Remember, this has to be an equation. What that means is the only way that one term can be bigger on the left, right-hand side is if the other term is smaller. And the only way that this can be uh, smaller over here is because this is bigger. Three times four equals two times six. The only way we can have a small number over here, two is smaller than three, the only way this can still be true is because six is a big number. Six is bigger than four over here. So it's that same basic principle over here. So it's always important to be able to look at an equation and see from the equation what's the relationship between the variables. Okay. So, so what did we see here? When you're moving into a bigger n, does that make your theta big or small? We're moving into this medium here with a bigger n. 1.33 is bigger than 1. It's not going to make our theta big or small. Here we have n2 and n1. So here our n2 is bigger than our n1. So is theta 2 going to be bigger or smaller than theta 1? So the question is, um, here we're moving from the air to the water. Right. And what we want to know is, uh, we know that means we're moving into a medium with a bigger n. Mm -hmm. Well, does that mean that this angle theta 2 is going to be bigger or smaller than theta 1? Smaller. Yeah, that was the idea that we worked out here. So what that tells us is, there's an inverse relationship between n and theta. The bigger the n is, the smaller the angle is going to be. It's always really important to see whether uh, variables move in the same direction or opposite directions. And this is something where if we, if we forgot it, 
We should be able to work it out pretty easily from looking at the Snell's Law equation and thinking on paper the way we did here. So what does it mean that theta 2 is going to be smaller? It means that this ray of light is going to be bent closer to the normal than this ray of light. This ray down here should be bent closer. That's kind of how I drew it here. I drew this angle smaller than this angle. So that's consistent with the idea this is the bigger n, so we should have the smaller theta. Okay. Bigger n, so the smaller theta. 